Mackenzie Phillips has struggled with drug and alcohol addiction most of her life. Now she chronicles her journey to sobriety in her new book, Hopeful Healing. Welcome, Mackenzie. So good to have you here. Thank you. I was reading through this book, and you know, the last book that you wrote, High on Arrival mm -hmm. in 2009, it seems you've come so far from that. This is a book really that, I mean, I know you wrote it f about recovery and, and over addiction, but this is a book that I think everybody can take a little something away from. What do you hope people get out of this? Well, thank you. Thank you for that, because, yeah. it, you know, I think essays on managing recovery and surviving addiction would seem like it's like a pretty you know specific slice yeah. of who who's targeted but um it really is for everyone and what i hope that people will get out of this especially people who might be curious about what addiction is or how it manifests or who we are that that they can learn that 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 addiction isn't a moral failing that it is a medical issue it is a health issue and that mm -hmm. that uh that we have to chip away at the stigma just keep chipping away at that so that we can all recover out loud and live free you know mm -hmm. you seem different than last time when we were here for high on arrival mm -hmm. what's different this time i was terrified all the time uh, uh you know in in uh, in hopeful healing there's a big chapter about fear mm -hmm. um how we we are fear driven and um i, I was just i didn't feel I hadn't re-entered my body yet, I guess. You know, I was really nervous and I felt uncomfortable because there was so much attention after High on Arrival and it was so intense and there was so much backlash and consequences for telling the truth. Mm -hmm. And so I felt very uncomfortable because I wasn't sure what, what anyone was going to ask me ever, you know? And backlash even from your own family. And you write, you know, I've come to understand that some in my family have, have chosen to hold on to the pain and anger they felt when I came out with the truth about my dad. I understand that they're still caught in a textbook response of devaluing the victim and holding up the perpetrator. It's a common response within families when there has been abuse perpetrated by a family member. How are you now? With well, it goes family? on. Yeah. That's, that's, the ch that's the paragraph that most people focus on. Right. But it goes on to say that we're on the mend and that we have relationships and that things are actually ch turning around. And that's really all I'm, I could say about my family because I don't want to blow things up again. You know, I love my I Did love my sisters. Did you expect that response though after the book? Uh, no, no, I had absolutely no expectation of the public nor the personal uh, response that I would get from High Honor. Maybe I was not, clearly I was naive. Uh, um, I guess you know I just didn't have the expectation that things would go the way they did. But at the same time, things went the way they did, and they did that for a reason. So I guess it's all okay. How is your relationship now, you say, with your sisters, with, your, with the rest of your family? We're on the mend. On the mend. We're on the mend, yeah. And what about the love of your life, your son, Shane? Oh, my gosh. How is your relationship with him? Shane's fantastic. And how dare he turn 30? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> come on, kid. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he's fantastic. He's, a, he's just an amazing human being. I mean, of course, every mom's going to say my kid is the most awesome person on the planet. But my kid is the most awesome person on the planet. <laughs> You know what I was, as I was reading through this, um, there really is, I was saying, something for everyone. I mean, there's a chapter on mindfulness. There's a chapter on, you know, control and giving up, you know, the things that you don't have control over. What do you think you've learned the most in your journey in recovery? I think the thing I've learned the most is no, with the power of love, with the power of intention, uh, I can do anything. And that I can't change someone else and that the way that someone else treats me is is a reflection of their relationship with themselves themselves and has very little to do with me and there's also a chapter you write about shame and guilt mm -hmm. and the difference between shame and guilt and mm -hmm. i think anybody can relate to having something in their lives they're not thrilled with or happy about mm -hmm. or feeling guilty whether it's about how they treated their child i think you write about your own son I yanked his arm his once. Arm. I, I still think I'm like a horrible mother for yanking his arm once, and he doesn't yeah. even remember it. And that's the thing is that when we understand that we're holding on to something uh, so powerful, like that guilt or that shame for something that we've done, that um, that the other person is probably not even experiencing it anymore. And so we're burdened with with a thought that that uh, it's a thought. It's not an actuality. You know, it's like mm -hmm. we've got to let it go. Speaking of letting go, you talked about used to, it was hard to hear a song, Mama and Papa, if you heard your dad sing, what's it like now if a song comes on the radio? I'm like, hi, Dad. Yeah. You let it go. I let it go. I let it go. Forgiveness is a really powerful thing. Forgiveness isn't for the other person. Forgiveness is to give yourself peace. Easier said than done, though. Easier said than done. People always say, well, how do I do that? And I say, begin. Just begin. 
you know, get into action. Start considering how you might be able to forgive yourself. What might you be able to do that will allow you to walk free? I'm yeah. telling you, this book, something for There's everybody. There's a lot in there.